Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. You better stop singing and start washing instead. What's that? What's that? I, can't hear you. I said you better stop singing and start washing instead. Julian Hartley will be here any minute. That's what you've been saying all day. And the day is almost over, so they're bound to come any minute. Let them come. I'll be ready for them. What happens to you in the shower anyway, David? I get clean. What happens to you? Oh, you goop. Feeling pretty good today. I'm feeling wonderful. Don't see why you should. You work like a fool all day. Fools always feel wonderful. No brain, but lots of brawn. Exactly. Well, come on out of that shower, brawn. Enough, enough. I'll be out in a minute. <laughs> David, what's happened? Did you fall down? Are you all right? David, what's happened? Get me in. David, are you all right in there? I'm, I'm fine. What's the matter? Well, there were all those screams all of a sudden. I turned on the cold water. Oh, for heaven's sake, you scared me out of three years' growth, you brute. Can a man take a cold shower without announcing it to his wife? What are you trying to do, catch <laughs> pneumonia? <laughs> Who said anything about pneumonia? Taking cold showers in the middle of winter. Middle of October. End of October. <laughs> Just gotten out of a sick bed. I got out of a sick bed weeks ago. Well, anyway, it's crazy. Not getting out of a sick bed. Taking a cold shower for no reason is a terrible shock to your system. Ah, feels wonderful. Fills me with pep and energy and... <clears throat> Makes me feel young again, like before I was married. That is just a superstition with men. What, getting married? Oh, I hate you. You wouldn't catch sensible women doing it. Uh, they just haven't got the courage. Oh, brawn and no brain is right. There's no point in arguing with you when you do something for the sake of manhood. Tell me, did you get a lot done on the place today? We certainly did. Fritz and I got the whole road to the barn fixed up. Is that good? It's terrific. Well, you couldn't get six hired hands to do that in a day. That's only two more than you and Fritz have. What? Hands. You and Fritz are four, so what's so wonderful about six? Oh, stop acting like a cluck. You know what I mean. Well, now we're even. We took all the stones out of the road and grazed it so it's nice and smooth and even. Filled in the ditches and covered it with cinders. You must really be feeling pretty good to do all that. I'm feeling wonderful. Why shouldn't I? Oh, it's just a slight matter of car accident. A couple of weeks in the hospital, concussion of the brain... And a broken collarbone, just picky in detail. Oh, that's all past history. The waters have closed over and not a scar to show for it. David, you aren't just kidding or pretending, are you? About what, darling? You really are feeling all right. This isn't all just a big front, so I won't nag you to take it easy. No, Mrs. Norton, no such thing. The whole business is gone and forgotten. Knock wood and cross your fingers. I want you to forget that it ever happened, you hear me? I can't ever forget it ever happened. You can't forget things that are important experiences in your life. No, of course not. I just meant you to forget to worry, that's all. Not to forget that I'm back and that it's just luck because I might very well not have been. Hold me tight, David. Don't ever let me go. I won't. I know you won't. Not ever. Because I won't let you. Not ever? Not ever. Now, come on. Get into your tie. You don't want to be without a tie when Julian Hartley arrives. Personally, I don't give one hoot how I am when Julian Hartley arrives. Don't you have any affection for your brother and sister-in-law at all, you monster? Of course I have. Where's my comb? I like Hartley. I even like Julia. Even like Julia? Well, it's not her fault she was born in Boston, has so much money. She's very nice in spite of it. Snob. Me? Snob? Mm, vice versa, but you're still a snob. Oh, there they are. And I am practically in my tie. Come on down. Hey, take it easy on those stairs or you'll be in the hospital. No, don't worry about me. Julia Hardy. Claudia. I couldn't wait for you to get here. Well, we're a little late. We closed the house in Newport and then ran into some problems getting all Julia's hat boxes packed into the car. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> we started out in plenty of time. If Hartley hadn't insisted on stopping at that ridiculous restaurant... Well, Claudia Lamb, it's good to see you. Has been a long time. For heaven's sake, don't stand on the doorstep. Come on in the living room. <laughs> How's that nephew of mine? Bobby's waiting to see you. He's enormous. A real Norton, now. Hmm. That's 
I just hope he grows enormous the way David has. Not the way you have, Hartley. Julia isn't very much in love with my girth. <laughs> I think that's the most becoming thing about you. Well, it's the most thing about me, at any rate. <laughs> <laughs> Claudia, I want to go right up and see Bobby. He'll stay right where he is until you get there, Julia. Have you had a good summer, Claudia? A wonderful summer. Terribly busy. Here it is, the end of October, and I, I don't know where it's all gone. But I had the baby, I was in the summer theater, and we bought a cow. A cow? Is that good? A cow is wonderful. After my nephew, I want to see her most. She is beautiful. Hmm. You'll love her, Hartley. We do. Uh, you're a funny child. The baby in one breath, a cow in the other. Well, it's the same sort of thing. Hmm. Tell me, how did you like being in the theater? Yes, I've always wanted an actress in the family. Well, <laughs> I'm not much of an actress, I'm afraid. I'm just a spare-time actress. I guess I'm too busy being married to really be an actor. Uh -huh. Maybe you should devote more time to the theater. What for? Oh, someday maybe you might be sorry if you don't. You know, there's apt to come a time in a woman's life when she needs other things to occupy her. When her home and her husband, perhaps, aren't quite enough to fill her life. That will never happen to me. Perhaps because you don't want it to. Mm, perhaps. Well, 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 well. It ain't McCann. Hello, Hartley. How Hello are you? Hello there, David. How are you? Do you, my favorite sister-in-law? How are you? <laughs> Your only sister-in-law. <laughs> so you are. Well, you both look fine. And, David, I've never, never seen you look better. Julia's right. The farm must be the only life. You oh, never it guessed is. that David was in a car accident just five weeks ago, would you? What? Did you say car accident? Claudia, for the love of Pete. Well, what's the matter with telling it? You're not ashamed of it, are you? It wasn't your fault. Well, nobody's interested in my car accident. I now. am. And I am, too. Of course they're interested. They're blood relatives, aren't they? Well, that's not good enough reason for what anything. What happened, Claudia? Only that David was in a terrible accident. He could have been killed. Oh, no. The other man was. Hmm. It was all his fault, but even so, it was a tragic thing to happen to him. Now, look, Claudia. Now, hush up, David. Anyway, it was, it was a rainy morning. David was driving off to the station, just like any other morning. Only the next thing he knew, this car crashed into him, and he was unconscious by the side of the road. Well, how awful. Why didn't you let us know? Well, first David was so sick, and then he was all right. I didn't see any point in letting you know. How sick was he? Now, why keep digging up these old corpses? Because everybody loves talking about their operation, so if you won't, I will. Julia, he had a concussion of the brain, a bad one, too. Say, that can be serious. It was. He broke his collarbone, too. He just had the luck of a fool that it didn't puncture his lung. Well, hmm. David, that's awful. Well, that was pretty bad for a few days, but, but I'm all over it now, so we can I get... wish I'd known. I, well, I don't know what I've done, but... I wish I'd known more. I was only in the hospital two weeks. Only? David, how long ago did it happen? Just a little over a month. And I'm good as new. I spent all afternoon fixing up the road to the barn. Not a twinge. Mm-hmm. I thought you looked a little peaked to me. Yes, at first glance you looked well. But now that I look at you more closely, Julia's right. You do look a little bit peaked. Oh, now, nonsense. You, you, you really think he does? Yes, I do. Thinner, too. I've gained two pounds. Perhaps not where you had them before. David, I don't think you ought to be so strenuous so quickly. I had a friend who had a concussion, and she was fine for four weeks, and the fifth week she collapsed. Nobody knew why. It's a blood clot. Now, I'm not saying this to upset you, but... No, no, of you... course not. Julia just means it as a warning for you to watch out. Oh, dear. Now, look, this is all a lot of nonsense. I think you're wonderful, David, to have this attitude to be so calm and heroic about it. But it's not very clever. Do you have a good doctor? The best of the best. Who, my boy? Dr. Barry. Dr. what, Barry? Dr. Augustus Barry. Augustus Barry? I never heard of him. Well, you wouldn't have. He's the local doctor in Eastbrook. He takes care of Bobby, too. He's just one. He takes care of Bobby, too? You mean he's not a specialist? No, he's a general man. He brings babies into the world. He takes tonsils out. Takes care of ulcers. Except not many farmers have ulcers. Oh, Dr. Barry is a wonderful man. I don't like the sound of him. There's a fine man in New York. You know Philip Dexter? Well, when Dexter broke a vertebrae or something, he saw a very fine man. Mm, Dr. Brooks. Mm. I think you ought to see him about the broken bone, David. And, of course, you've heard of Harting, the brain specialist. I think you ought to come into town tomorrow and have him look you over. 
But there's nothing the matter with my brain. There's nothing the matter with my bone, either. Well, you can't be too careful. After all, Julia's right, David. Why take chances with your health? Maybe you ought to see that bone man, David. But and the brain man, too. I, I feel fine. You can't feel fine. Not after what you've been through. I wouldn't feel fine, I know. Well, how can I make you see that I do? Now, David, it's quite honorable for you to behave in this way, so Claudia won't worry, but... Yes. If it were me, I'd still be in the hospital. But it isn't you. It's me. It's I, David. I don't care who it is. I'm feeling all right. Claudia, you must have had your hands full, you poor dear. Well, I imagine that David was the most difficult convalescent. Well, I'm grateful he's not the kind of man who pampers himself, but... But there are extremes. Now, David, take my advice. You come into town and see these specialists. That's the last thing in the world I intend to do. Well, I guess there's no point in talking about it now, Harvey. <laughs> We'll let Claudia talk to him about it later. Oh, dear. It's getting so late. Yeah, so if we want to see Master Norton, we better step on it. I wouldn't dream of leaving without seeing my first nephew. Well, let's go up then. You too? Of course, me too. He's my son, isn't he? Mm, yes, but you've just come down the stairs. So what? So you don't want to go climbing up them again? Why not? Well, man, you've been a very sick boy. Now, you stay in the living room, David. Now, look. We'll be down in a moment. But I don't want to stay in the living room. You coming, Hartley? Mm-hmm. If absolutely necessary, Claudia, you stay downstairs with him. We'll find our way around the second floor. You have your orders, David. Oh, darling, maybe you better stay downstairs. Mm. Maybe... Mm. For the love of Mike. What for the love of Mike? I just got around to convincing you that I was perfectly all right. I'm fine. Then Julia and Hartley had to come up here and spoil everything. I'm going up... Ooh. What's the matter, darling? Twinge in my shoulder. A twinge? Yeah. Oh. It's probably only the power of suggestion. If you go up, I'll, I'll stay here. Shopping often has its exasperating moments. You can't find what you want, or the price is too high, or they don't have your size. When such irritations overtake you, take yourself over to the Coca-Cola cooler. You'll find those friendly red coolers in most stores these days. After delicious ice-cold Coke, you somehow take things in your stride because you shop refreshed. Mr. King, a word with you in private? With pleasure, Mrs. Norton. Tell me, is David really all well again? Oh, I think so. I hope so, but he's not the kind of man to take care of himself. Strange how he and his brother are different. Well, that's often the case. And Claudia. She and I married the two brothers and so different, too. That's what makes uh, a horse racing. Mm, so they say. Claudia looks well, but I hope this farm life isn't too much for her. Oh, I don't think so. No beauty parlors near, no time for real care. No woman can afford to let herself go. I've given her a little advice to that effect. And uh, she'll take it, much to David's dismay. Really? To his dismay? Uh, tomorrow, Mrs. Norton. Come around. You'll see. I will. Goodbye. Sorry I interrupted you. Oh, not at all. Not at all. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.